Hey, Nate. Uh, as far as your defense this season, uh, you talked last year, Charles Bediaco was a big anchor for you guys. Do you have any sense of who could be an anchor for this defense this year? Yeah, it's a good question, and we've talked a lot about defense with our guys. You know, I've been at Alabama four years. Two of the four, we've been ranked in the top three of the country in defensive efficiency, and those are the two years we've won the SEC regular season and tournament both. So when we've been good defensively, we've had really successful years. So our point with our guys, we've got to be great defensively now. We've done it two different ways. Three years ago, we didn't really have an anchor like that, but we had Herb Jones, who was covering a lot of mistakes. Last year, Charles covered a lot of mistakes, put him at the rim, protected the rim well. We were able to take away threes. We, we don't have a Herb Jones, and we don't have a Charles Bediaco. So to answer your question about who's going to anchor it, you know, there's some different options. You know, Nick Pringles really improved, fouling a lot less. We need him to foul less and protect the rim more. He's getting better at that. I think the transfer, Mohamed Wage, can do some of that too. Now, he hasn't been healthy. You know, he came with an injury from West Virginia, so we haven't been able to uh, have him out there in live drills yet. He's about there to get him out there live. So, But I think he can provide some of that. So between the two of those would be our best two options to provide some uh, real presence at the rim like Charles had. But, you know, we may have to do things a little bit differently maybe not quite send everything down to the rim like we were able to do last year, maybe play a little bit more like we did three years ago when we were also third in the country in defense. So we're experimenting with some stuff. we got a good staff. We're, uh, we're trying to figure it out, but we do need to figure it out if we plan on winning at the level we want out here because when our defense has been good, that's when we've been able to win at that level. Hello, Coach. Uh, Kerry Clark, Tide 100.9, Tuscaloosa. You mentioned Wage. I was wondering if you could just update us on the health of the rest of the team. It, it looked like Diabate got back out there a little bit earlier in the week from video, but just tell us who all is healthy and uh, where they all stand. Yeah, so we definitely got to get healthy. You know, we, we had both Mohammeds, Wage and Diabate, both required um, procedures once they got to campus with previous injuries that we weren't aware of. So Diabate has been able to participate in some live things in practice. He's still not going up and down in live scrimmage, but he's close. You know, he, he had a, a knee issue. Uh, Wage had an issue with his foot. He's still not doing anything uh, live, but I, I, the, both of them are on pace to be able to play the play in game one. So both of them, you know, the time frame was to get them healthy just in time for game one. We think they'll both be there for game one. Everybody else we should have by game one. Everything else is just a minor an ankle tweak, a groin pull, a hip flexor. I can't I can't go through it. We've had we've had a lot of different just minor injuries. Everybody's not gonna be available for our close scrimmage and our exhibition game. We do think everybody should be available by game one, though. Anything on Reitzel? Yeah, right has been one that's been in and out here and there. He's had different things. He he's practicing now. He's um you know, he's a guy that plays so hard and so physically. I mean, he's a tough physical guard and he shoot, he doesn't shy away from anything. He kind of puts himself in there to get some nicks and bruises here and there. So for people that have been through to watch practice, he may or may not have been practicing that particular day. He's, he's, he hasn't been able to catch a break. He's had, I think, three different injuries that have kept him out of, you know, various times since he's been here. But he's practicing, he practiced today. Yeah, uh, he should be available. Uh, we've got a close scrimmage. He should be available for that, and hopefully he's available for the following exhibition against Wake Forest. James Fletcher from On3. You had staff turnover this year at almost an unprecedented rate. How are you still able to succeed in the transfer portal and pitch to those players when it was just you for an amount of time and then you were still building your staff out? It's a good question. Uh, I thought we did an unbelievable job in the transfer portal. We got four transfers that are all going to contribute significantly. You know, I think the staff that we put together, while it may have taken some time, uh, I think we got it right. I'm super happy with the staff we got, you know, kind of going in order of the guys we hired. Austin Clonch was the first one we hired. You know, and 
Austin's from uh, Texas, coached in Louisiana. Nichols won the Southland two out of the last three years, which if you understand that, that league, it's not easy to do at Nichols. They got real low budget. So, you know, he kind of did it with sheer willpower and just outworked everybody. He's got a ton of energy. So, you know, we hit the portal. You know, he, he was the one guy I hired that had been in college last year. You know, Ryan Pannone was an assistant with the Pelicans. I think everybody up here that's in the basketball knows who he is. He uh, was the head coach for the Pelicans G League team here in Birmingham, the squadron. But, you know, he works really hard. You know, he was able to, we were able to get on some Zooms with some transfer guys. And, you know, he was able to get in there with, you know, Grant Nelson particularly was one of his that he kind of targeted. And Grant took a while, you know, and Grant's trying to make it to the NBA. He was real close to staying in the draft this year. So having a guy that's been in the NBA, that's developed guys that play in the NBA, you know, that's Ryan's background, started in player development, and he's great at it. So that certainly helped. And then go to a guy like Preston Murphy, who's been one of the best recruiters in college basketball, really since I've been involved with Division One, all the way back to my days in Romulus. You know, Preston's from Saginaw, recruited my kids when I was at Romulus. I, I think he's one of the best coaches, recruiters in the country. So, you know, he didn't get hired till later, but, you know, we, we were able to, with the staff we had in place, recruit some of these transfers. And the transfers, you know, a lot of times are looking to be able to play professionally. And I think the staff we put together is going to be able to help get them there. So between, you know, Aaron Estrada was a CAA player of the year, back-to-back -back years, which that's not easy to do. I coach at similar level at Buffalo, those players, Every player of the year in the MAC could have easily come here and started at uh, Alabama. So to get Aaron was big. Latrell Wrightsel from Fullerton, who's got two years left, it's huge. He's a tough physical guard like we like to have on the defensive side, and he's pretty talented on offense too. He averaged over 15 a game at Fullerton, and then talked about Grant a little bit. And then the last one that we were able to get, you know, two, a couple of the guys we got late. You know, why Gay we got late when. Portal kind of opened back up for them at West Virginia. Uh, you know, and he's super athletic and can kind of give us some of that rim protection. You know, we lost Charles late, you know, and so we needed to replace him late. And he's kind of a perfect replacement for Charles. Coach, on that same vein, how challenging is it with the three assistant coaches and the newcomers to really get your system implemented? And how much time do you think you're spending uh, coaching the coaches, coaching your assistants of your system? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good, good question, too, just because you got to get everybody on the same page. And when you spend so much of your time recruiting both the transfers, the current team, and then trying to get in on the t class of 24, you know, you didn't have as much time as you'd like to sit down and talk through basketball. But I've got three guys that are really sharp with basketball. You know, they, they've kind of – we sit down, meet, kind of answer a bunch of questions. They've got a lot of questions. How do we do it here? You know, I'll, kind of tell them how we did it here, but I'm open for discussion based on our current roster as to what maybe, is there a better way to do it with our current roster? Because the way we've done it here has changed from year to year too. So, you know, we, we, I don't necessarily know that I've educated them on everything, but we've definitely talked about how we've done it and how would, how have they've done it, where the places they've been and with our current roster, what does it look like? and what would be the best way to do it. So there's been plenty of discussion. There's more discussion every day. We, yeah, the staff meetings definitely take longer with the new staff because the previous staff, you're pretty used to each other and that you can get through them quick. But I think longer staff meetings with more questions and answers make you think, makes you think about more things and which in turn I think can make you better. Hey, Coach Ryan Hennessy, NBC 13 in Birmingham. Uh, last year in Mountain Brook, when we were here, you guys were in the middle of the pack by the media voted wise, ended up winning the SEC. You lost some players. We're here in Birmingham again, middle of the pack, a little bit higher. What does this team look like this year? Kind of proved the doubters wrong last year. I know every year is different, especially in college basketball. What, what were we, what were we picked, Ryan, this year? Fifth? Fifth this year. What were we picked last year? Fifth? What would we pick going into uh, 21, my second year? I think we were, I think we were pick fifth. I think, uh, if I remember correctly, I thought maybe I'm wrong. Go, go, go ahead and look, go ahead and look it up. We, we was fifth going into my second year. There you go. So we've been picked three times now, fit or picked fifth three times now. Shows how smart you guys are. So, 
I'll take fifth. If you can pick us fifth again next year, that'd be great. So, I mean, look, I think the preseason polls are great. We like to get a lot of uh, fan interest around the programs. I think SEC basketball's been raised to a new level at a record number of teams in the tournament. I think a lot of this stuff is to generate fan interest. If you want to generate some fan interest, go ahead. But I think, especially with the portal, it's really hard to predict how good different teams are going to be. I mean, you see some super talented freshmen, and I think you see some really talented freshmen that don't end up being as good as what everybody thought they were going to be. You also have some freshmen like Noah Clowney that I think if you go back and look at our rankings last year, he might have been the lowest ranked kid of all of our freshmen coming in, and he ends up going 21st in the draft after one year with us. So I think it's hard to predict preseason stuff. You have to do it. It generates fan interest. Let's do it. But I'm not – I mean, we can use fifth to motivate us, disrespect – What I, it is what it is. There's some other really good teams in our league that were picked ahead of us. There's some other really good teams in our league that were picked behind us. You look at Vanderbilt last year. Look at where they were picked and where they finished. I think Stackhouse did an unbelievable job. I think when I looked at Coach of the Year voting, I went to see who made the biggest jump between preseason and where they actually finished. And I think he did a better job than anybody, which is why he he had my vote. So, you know, I, would would I like to be picked fifth and finish first again? Yeah, I would. That, that's our goal, I think. But I think that's 14 teams' goal to finish first. So, you know, people think we'll be the fifth best team. They've thought that twice previously, and we, we ended up out. Performing it, I think when they picked us a little higher one year, we, we performed less than what they thought. So we, it, what matters is how you play when the ball tips up here in three weeks and how you play in SEC games, and that, that's what we're concerned with, getting better every day. Yeah, Mark Sears, a Muscle Shoals guy, went to Ohio, and he kind of got a diamond in the rough in him. Last year had a big season. This year, obviously, veteran leadership. What does he mean to your team this year, and what have you seen out of his growth? Uh, he's our leading returning scorer. He was our second scorer behind Brandon Miller last year. You know, he's our one kid from Alabama. He's been great for us, plays hard, can really shoot it. He tested the draft, worked out from some NBA teams, got some feedback. You know, we're trying to work with him on, you know, what he would need to do to make it uh, at that level. So it, to me, it'd be great for a kid from Muscle Shoals that didn't really have any high major offers coming out of high school went to Ohio and then we were able to bring him back home and if we could get him to help him achieve his dream of playing in the NBA, it would be great. You know, he's already won the SEC at, in his home state school at Alabama. So we need him to lead. We need him to be better than he was last year and he was really good for us. But And, and he knows that. He's been more vocal. He's been a better leader for us. Uh, he, he's really, it's hard to say he's improved his shooting, but he's improved his shooting. He was a pretty good shooter last year. You know, we're really working on some, some more playmaking abilities, you know, can he, and we don't really have a true point guard per se with the way we play as fast as we play. We got multiple handlers, but he needs to have some more point guard responsibilities, show he can play and pick and roll a little better, get downhill. So we're working on all that with him and then trying to get his defense better. But we need him to have a great year for us. I think he expects to, and, you know, I, I think he's primed to have a really good year for us. Hey, Coach, AP Stedham, AP and Kelly, as we see at Syndicated Radio. Coach, is this going to be one of your taller teams that you've coached? And is, if so, is that an emphasis, uh, a little bit change in your offense and defense? And do you like the transfer portal? I mean, it's here to stay, but do you enjoy the roster change every year? Yeah, I, I think it'll be one of our tallest overall. You know, now we, we had some size last year. We started Brandon Miller at 6'8 at the 3. You know, and played him at the two. She played some one even. So, you know, I think we can do that with Grant Nelson, kind of play him all over at 6'11". Jaron Stevenson can play a similar role at 6'10", 6'11", is what Noah Clowney played. And then we got Pringle and Wage, you know, inside there. You know, we've got some longer guards. Sam Walters can play 2'3 at 6'9". Ryland's grown. He's 6'6". So, yeah, we, we, we've got some length you know, will it change how we play? I mean, we're always tweaking things a little bit. There's going to be no significant changes. We're going to play fast. We're going to 
keep the floor spread. We're going to take a lot of threes. It's going to be open, modern offense. You know, maybe we'll post up some mismatches a little bit more with Grant Nelson. He's comfortable in there, but we're going to have him playing a lot more on the perimeter than what he's done in the past. So, and, and the transfer portal thing, I, you know, I, I don't mind it. I, I, it is what it is. You better adjust and figure it out. I think every year you should plan on have, probably losing a couple guys. You know, and you look at us last year, we had, you know, Noah, Dom Welch graduate. You got a couple guys go to the NBA that maybe weren't expected to go before the season, you know, Clowney and Charles. And then you have a couple guys transferring. All of a sudden you got to flip over, you know, 75% of your roster. But I think that's becoming fairly commonplace in college basketball now. So whether you like it or not, it, it's here to stay. Uh, it does give you ways to form the roster the way you want. You know, we like versatile guys. We were able to go get a kid like Grant Nelson. Needed some tough guards, you know. Got Wage, or I'm sorry, Reitzel and uh, Estrada. And then you needed, you know, Charles stays in the draft, maybe a little unexpectedly, and you're able to go replace him with a guy like Wage. I think it gives you a chance to have a really good roster every single year. And that, that's our goal right now. Drew DeArmond, WCZN Radio and Huntsville, Alabama coach. I know you talked about a guy like Clowney being better than you thought. Uh, talk about Chris Parker. I mean, I've heard some good things about him and about how I know you like guys loved him in the, in the uh, recruiting process. And then uh, you mentioned Rylan Griffin. How, how, how much can – what kind of leap can he make in his sophomore year? You know, Ry Rylan can make a big jump. He was good for us as a freshman. You know, I, I, he grew a little bit, got stronger. He's shooting it better. He's got a year in the system, so he knows it better. We need him to be better defensively, better decision-making with the ball, and he definitely got those capabilities and can be good for us. And Chris Parker's, you know, coming it's, – it's always hard for guys coming out of high school. they got to adjust the speed of the game. The, you know, so we're working with him on his shooting. If he could, if he could shoot it, he's got a chance to be really good. He's long. He's athletic. You know, he plays hard. So, you know, we're trying to sell him on kind of that Herb Jones defensive role. He's definitely not to Herb Jones' level on defense, but he's got some physical tools to get there. So, you know, he could be a versatile defender. We, we just got to keep coaching him, teaching him our system on defense so that individually he can be great within the team system on defense. But he's got a chance to help us for sure. John Zane with Associated Press. Last year you could obviously – Kind of had a one, Brandon Miller doing what he did. Um, do you feel like it'd be more of a kind of a committee thing in the in the when final minutes of the game and all that? And can that be good for your team? That yeah, happens? I don't I don't know if we've got anybody that's going to go number two in a draft this year. So it, it probably will be more by committee. We've got really good options. Uh, Aaron Estrada's proven himself at the college level at a high level. I, you know, he's going to definitely have the ball in his hands a lot. Grant Nelson's big-time player that should be playing in the NBA after this year. You know, you can go to him. Mark Sears is our second-leading scorer last year on the number one team in the country. He's back. You know, between those three guys, you've got great options. But then you've got some other guys that I think can, you know, guys that have played big in big games. I think Ryland's never scared of the moment. I think Reitzel's. Showed up big in big games, and I think you got just got some other guys that can make some tough, smart, heady plays. So, I, yeah, I don't think it's where we're going to have one guy that everybody knows is going to get it. I think it's going to be shared a little bit more. And we're kind of game to game, see who's playing well, see what the matchups are like those particular games. But, yeah, I would definitely think we would have a little bit more by committee this year. Kennington Smith with The Athletic. You just mentioned Aaron Estrada, who you have with you today. How is he assimilated into the program, both on the court, within the system, and within the team's culture? He's assimilated great. He's an unbelievable kid, like great leader, plays hard, one of the hardest working guys I've ever been around. And then his his skill level is really high. I mean, we chart everything in practice. His at the rim finishing percentage is as high as any guard I've ever had. I mean, he can finish, got the whole finishing package. You know, he shoots it well from three, you know, and, and he can be a great defender. So he's not missing much. And really, to be honest with you, I think one of the best things he does for our team is he brings it every day. Like he's 
not up, down, up. He's every single day you know what you're getting from Aaron. And he's a hard playing guy. You know, and he's gonna have some games, some days where he shoots a lot better than others. He, last week he went ten of fifteen from three one day. He's not gonna do that every every day in live play, but he is gonna play hard and he's gonna bring everything he's got every day. And I think that makes us a lot better as a team. When you don't have to beg your point guard to bring effort every day, you know, between him and Sears, I think those two guards and Reitzel too, all three of those guys in the backcourt are everyday guys that just bring it every day. That sets the tone for your team, and I think it allows you to have tough, gritty, defensive-minded, blue-collar type of guys and a type of team like we want to have. Okay, thank you, guys. Thanks.